Okay, so I didn't have as much potassium chlorate as I thought. Um, I only had 13 grams of it, um, so we're going to have to do it with that. I need to order some more potassium chlorate. So the first step in this synthesis is to combine potassium chlorate with the correct amount of ammonium sulfate in hot water and allow everything to dissolve. Then we are supposed to heat it up, let it stir until a thin slurry forms. So, oh man, my potassium chlorate sticks to the glass. That is so annoying. If we add a little extra water in here, it won't hurt anything since we're going to have to evaporate it out anyway. It will just take it a little longer to evaporate. So I'm going to let this stir now and um, until it forms a solution, then I'll just let it keep stirring on the heat until we get the thin slurry and then I'll come back when we're ready to do the next step. Alright everyone, so it has finally evaporated down to the point where there is solid readily crystallizing out here. Um, the instructions do not say to let this cool down before you add in the ethanol, but I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. The next step is to add four times the volume of our solution here of 80% um, ethanol. So I've got that all made up here and ready to go. So as soon as this cools down a little bit, I will add in the ethanol. Well, I'll come back and I'll do that and then filter off the um, potassium sulfate and that will give us our pure ammonium chlorate solution and then from that we will make the barium chlorate. <coughs> Alright, so this has cooled down a little bit and now we are going to add four times the volume, 80% ethanol. That's about half of it. Get the other half here. There we go. Alright. Now, I'm going to let that stir up for a little bit and, I don't know, just get down to about room temperature and make sure that we get as much potassium sulfate crystallizing out as possible and then we need to filter it to remove all of the um, potassium sulfate precipitate. I'm wondering if it wouldn't be better to chill it just to get as much to precipitate out as possible. In fact, I think I might do that. So I skipped on the idea of chilling down this mixture. Um, the reason being ammonium chlorate is actually only slightly soluble in ethanol, which is probably why we had to use four times the volume of the liquid we had there. Um, and we all, and 80% ethanol only was so that the ammonium chlorate would still stay dissolved. So, it's been stirring here for a little while. It is at room temperature. So, I'm just going to filter this now into this beaker. And then, the textbook says to distill off the ethanol. I don't know that we're actually going to do that. I may just come up with something different rather than actually full-on distillation. So, we'll see when we get there. So anyway, I'll come back when this is all filtered out. Alright, so all of the ethanol is removed, at least I think it is. Um, if there's any left in there, it's only a tiny little bit, and I don't think it's going to mess with anything for the next step. Um, especially considering that after this step that we're about to do, we have to evaporate it down to dryness anyway. So. What we're going to do now is we are going to take aqueous and hot um, barium hydroxide and we are going to add it into here. Okay. Whoa. Right. A little 
little extra water, that's fine, it's not a big deal. Now, I guess that all of the ethanol had not been removed from there. Oh well, again, it doesn't really matter. Um, what we need to do now is let this stir and heat up, and then we need to test it and make sure that it is alkaline. Um, yep, okay, we're getting a smell of ammonia, which is exactly what we should be getting. So, awesome. We're just going to let this heat and stir for a little bit. I'll even add a little extra water in here. Oh, okay. There's stuff swimming up the sides of the beaker. I hate it when it does that. I really wish I knew why it did that sometimes and doesn't do it other times. It's really obnoxious. Oh well, anywho, let this go, let this do its thing, and then um, I will come back when I have evaporated this down and we are ready to move on to the next step. Alright everyone, so the step that I was working on called to evaporate this down to dryness and it got very close to that. Um, I've actually added a little water since then trying to rinse stuff um, down off the sides with um, limited success. Um, but anyway, it got so close to dryness that I think it's going to be fine. Um, it's definitely testing alkaline to pH paper. There is no more smell of ammonia coming off of it. So the conversion should be done. All of the ammonium chlorate should have been converted into barium chlorate. Now, clear, this is not all barium chlorate. There is a lot of excess barium hydroxide in there by design because that's what the protocol called for. Now we are supposed to combine it with five times the quantity of the residue with um, water and then bubble carbon dioxide through this in order to convert all of the barium hydroxide to barium carbonate. Now the best I can figure as to why it will not also just precipitate out the barium with the barium chlorate is because carbon dioxide bubbling through water um, does not produce carbonate, it produces carbonic acid. So if that reacts with barium chlorate, it would form barium carbonate and chloric acid, which will then just turn right around and react with the barium carbonate. So I think that's why that trick works. Um, we're about to see. So I don't actually know what the mass of the residue is because I'm, I'm so scientific in my work and I, I don't actually you know measure a lot of stuff as I go along because, you know, why do that when we can make it so much more fun and uncertain, right? Um, actually, I just didn't think to do it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to just kind of guess. I mean, the worst that can happen is that we'll end up with more water that we have to evaporate down. And even though barium carbonate is very insoluble, there might be a teensy little bit left in the solution. I'm not stressing over that. I, I mean, I don't really care. I don't know that it's going to really interfere with anything that I want to do. Um, so, plus I can always bubble more carbon dioxide through it later after it evaporates down some. So anyway, I would like to keep it at like somewhere close to or under 200 mils. Just because, but see how all that stuff on the sides, man. That is a real bitch. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get that shit off of there. Anywho, I'm going to set up the carbon dioxide generator now, so I will come back when we are ready to do that. All right, so I've set up the CO2 generator. There's just sodium carbonate in there and some dilute HCl in the addition funnel. I've transferred our solution to this graduated cylinder just because, I mean, it's going to be much more efficient if the gas bubbles up through a column of liquid rather than um, bubbling it through a beaker. I mean, it worked for the other one with the hydrogen sulfide, but why make our lives any more difficult than we have to? So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. And I'm not going to film the whole process since the video is getting kind of long. Just want to bubble carbon dioxide through this to precipitate out all of the excess barium as barium carbonate. How much CO2 does that take? 
I really couldn't say. I'm just going to keep bubbling it through there until I've used it all up and uh, hope for the best, I guess. Maybe take a little droplet of the solution out and um, test it with just a drop of carbonate and see if it doesn't, you know, if anything precipitates out. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. So I will come back once all the barium carbonate has been precipitated out and we're ready to filter this thing. Alright, so all of the barium carbonate has precipitated out so far as I can tell and I'm just filtering it now. I'm going to take the clear filtrate and evaporate it down to get our barium chlorate. So I will come back when there's something to see. Okay, it is very hard to see but I'm starting to get a crust of crystals on this. I don't know if it'll show up or not. Let's try that. Oh, okay, yeah. There we go. Now you can see it. So they are starting to form on top of the liquid here, and I'm getting a more amorphous layer forming on top of this. Um, just because there's so much of it, I'll evaporate this one down a good ways, and then I'll put it up in the evaporating dish with the rest of it. But it is happening, so it does indeed look like we're getting our barium chlorate. Yay! That's so awesome. That is so cool. So I will come back when there's something a little more impressive to see. Okay, everybody. Sorry about the background noise. The rain is finally here. But here we have it. Barium chlorate. The synthesis was successful. Yay! That's so awesome. Um, all I did was evaporate the solution down until it was almost completely dry. Um, I do want to be able to scrape it off of here and put it into a bottle. Um, but there we go. So, the synthesis of barium chlorate from potassium chlorate. That's so fucking cool. I've been wanting to do this one for so long and I just kept putting it off. So... Now it's done, and I have some barium chlorate to make weird other chlorates using metathesis reactions. How fun! Anywho, if you liked that video, give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't like it, well, I don't know what it takes to make you happy. Subscribe, comment, share the video, and until the next one, y'all, I will see you later. Look at that shit. That's so awesome. That is so great.